of love. Comics are full of iconic romances. Superman and Lois Lane, Batman and Catwoman, Cyclops and Jean Grey, Spider-Man and Mary Jane, Black Canary and Green Arrow, Wiccan and the Hulkling, and many more. When it comes to superhero stories, the characters in soap opera drama of their relationships are often as compelling as the action in battles. But these well-known love stories need little in the way of explanation, many having become synonymous with iconic romance. Over the years, there have been all kinds of romances between the many heroes and villains of the Marvel and DC universes, some more iconic than others. This video will look at the 10 strangest romantic entanglements in comics history. These bizarre flings have everything, right down to the dates with death itself. Kicking it off with number 10, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver. In the alternate dimension known as the Ultimate Universe, these twin Avengers had a much more intimate and disturbing relationship. First introduced as mutant terrorists, just like in the original comics, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver eventually joined the Ultimates, this universe's version of the Avengers. The Ultimates comic series was defined by its attempts to be shocking and more adult than the main Marvel Universe. In its attempts to make the characters edgy, it pushed things a little too far when it came to Wanda Maximoff. Due to their history as terrorists, both Wanda and her brother Pietro remain clandestine members of a secret Black Ops team, although it might have been for reasons beyond just their villainous origins. From even their earliest appearances, this version of the Maximoff family was downright creepy with hints that they were maybe a little too close. While for the most part they were only hinted at being a little too attached to one another through a lot of uncomfortably handsy drawings, it was eventually confirmed that the relationship was far more intimate than just being brother and sister. When Captain America lectured Wanda about wearing less revealing clothes, Quicksilver was ready to kill him. When he expressed confusion, fusion to the Wasp, she criticized Cap for not being more open-minded and keeping up with the times rather than being stuck in the 40s. It would be one thing if she was just talking about her clothing, but Wasp then told Cap that Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver were in love and seemed cool with it. Though Hawkeye and Captain America worried about how it might impact the Ultimates' reputation if the relationship became public, they wouldn't need to worry about it for very long. This disturbing romance was cut short when Wanda was killed by an evil AI Ultron. Although the Marvel Cinematic Universe took a lot of inspiration from many parts of the Ultimate Universe, this is one idea that we can all be thankful they decided not to adapt when they introduced Scarlet Witch. Intrigued? Like and subscribe to Plot Armor Comics for more wild stories. Next up at number 9 is Jubilee and Robin. In the 1990s crossover series DC vs. Marvel, the two iconic publishers collided with the heroes facing off in battles where fans decided who would win. The interdimensional tournament entangled this pair of teen heroes best known for their association with their gruff and brooding mentors Wolverine and Batman. While DC vs. Marvel was focused mostly on combat, Jubilee and Robin found themselves more inclined for romance than fighting. As you may know, Jubilee was a teenage member of the X-Men who grew particularly close to Wolverine who took her under his wing as a surrogate daughter and informal sidekick. Her mutant ability was the power to shoot fireworks from her fingertips. Robin the Boy Wonder needs little introduction as Batman's sidekick. Robin fights crime alongside his mentor. This particular Robin was Tim Drake, the third to hold the title. The basic premise of the series is that each universe was actually part of great cosmic beings who had long been dormant. When the two entities awoke, they became jealous of one another and sought to prove their universe was superior. To prove their superiority, each recruited a team of champions, heroes and villains from their universes to represent them. Whichever universe won this tournament would survive while the other would be erased. To properly enjoy this particularly bizarre story requires one to suspend their disbelief and not question why the heroes would agree to fight each other instead of just teaming up to find a more peaceful solution. Once you do that, you can sit back and enjoy the cool moments. This cosmic tussle ended up transporting different characters back and forth between universes with J. Jonah Jameson and Ben Riley, Peter Parker's clone who was Spider-Man at the time, long story, working at the Daily Planet along with Clark Kent and Lois Lane. Robin found himself briefly teleported to the Marvel Universe where he landed in Jubilee's room. Jubilee, with her iconic yellow trench coat, couldn't help but admire Robin's fashion sense with his bold color choices, particularly the yellow cape. The Boy Wonder and Teen Mutant were not together long, but immediately hit it off. When their time came to do battle, both expressed a wish that they could have met under better circumstances. Before the fighting began, they shared a brief kiss as he promised that nothing was personal. Despite her mutant fireworks ability, Jubilee was quickly defeated by Robin, who managed to sneak up on her and tie her up almost as soon as their match began. 
Disappointed she was defeated without so much as a punch being thrown, Robin told her he never would have hit her anyway. When the contest was over and Captain America and Batman had helped to convince the cosmic beings to stop their fighting, the universe came to a truce, each proud of the champions the other had created. The worlds were set right but Robin and Jubilee could not help but be sad at the end of their brief affair. Doomed by the nature of this crossover between the two companies, these two still managed to be quite a cute couple with great chemistry. Even though the interdimensional romance made it a seemingly odd pairing, it actually made quite a bit of sense. Both Jubilee and Tim Drake were introduced in the early 90s and were essentially teen sidekicks to two of the most hard-edged heroes of their universes. Certainly the two would have continued to find more in common if they had been given more time. Jubilee was not the only mutant to find herself in an unexpected relationship. No surprise that the X-Men, with all of their drama and complicated history, have had more than their fair share of far-fetched flings. Next up at number 8, Hercules and Wolverine. This couple might seem like a completely random romance, but it can't beat out Aunt May's villainous Valentine that threatened to turn Spider-Man's world upside down by giving him an Uncle Octopus. But we'll get to that. Random though Wolverine and Hercules might be, this powerhouse pair of the iconic berserker mutant and the demigod of Olympus would actually prove to be one of the multiverse's greatest power couples. When Scott Summers, Cyclops, ended up brought to an alternate Earth where its Professor X used mutants to power the planet, he encountered alternate versions of multiple X-Men teammates, most notably an alternate version of Wolverine. This Wolverine was more refined and hailed from an Earth where Canada was still a colony of England. Still going by his original name, James Howlett, Wolverine was still just as tough as the Prime Marvel Universe's version, but a bit more refined and retained some of the prim and proper personality of James Howlett, who grew up on a wealthy Canadian estate. Howlett revealed that he was Governor General of the Dominion of Canada and Viceroy of Her Majesty's Expedition to Shangri-La. A very fancy title that emphasized how he was different from the classic berserker we know and love. Instead of the metal adamantium, his bones were coated in golden adamantine, the metal of the gods. The enchanted metal protected his mind from psychic attacks, which came in handy when he eventually joined the dimension-hopping extreme X-Men, who were tasked with killing ten evil versions of Xavier who threatened all of reality. When the X-Men encountered an alternate reality Hercules, Wolverine's teammates noticed he had a strange reaction action to meeting the demigod. After some prodding, Howlett revealed that where he came from, he had fallen in love with Hercules. However, their same-sex relationship was forbidden and Zeus was furious with Hercules for sullying his godly heritage by falling in love with a mortal. Howlett was stripped of his titles and the couple was cast into hell by Zeus. In the underworld, the mighty duo proved why they had earned a reputation as their Earth's greatest heroes. Together they fought through the demons of the netherworld for three years straight until they were free. They had been separated when Howlett was kidnapped to act as a mutant battery but eventually found each other again when the floating Xavier head in a jar that led the extreme X-Men recruited a new team of heroes to complete their mission. Howlett and his teammates had a abandoned the mission temporarily to save their young teammate, a teen genius version of Nightcrawler. With Nightcrawler saved, they returned to the task of eliminating the evil Xaviers. Reunited once again, Hercules and Howlett showed off their impressive teamwork until the extermination event where the multiverse faced a crisis that would end all realities. Weird how often that happens, isn't it? In the battle, Hercules was killed fighting the cosmic beings, threatening to end everything. Howlett was heartbroken but lived up to his tough reputation and continued to fight. Once the dust settled, the Extreme X-Men disbanded and Howlett was off to the underworld once again to bring back his love. The Extreme X-Men was a short-lived series, but it became a cult favorite among fans with this strange couple being the breakout stars. Though they've not been seen since the series ended, there is always a chance these two could show up again. Who wouldn't want to see the story of Wolverine fighting through a horde of demons to save his soulmate? They are definitely a more likable love story than Lex Luthor manipulating an alien to fall for him. Next up is number 7 with Thor and Captain America. Hercules isn't the only godly being to find strange romance. There was a time not too long ago where both Steve Rogers and Thor Odinson no longer held their traditional titles, having 
being passed on their mantle to their successors. Sam Wilson the Falcon had taken the name Captain America after Steve Rogers' super soldier was stolen from him, while Dr. Jane Foster wielded Mjolnir after Odin's son was no longer worthy to lift the hammer. Sam and Jane both joined the Avengers along with other new heroes, Miles Morales' Spider-Man and Miss Marvel. This new generation of all-new, all-different Avengers was an interesting era where none of the traditional iconic heroes were in the spotlight. But with a new Captain America and God of Thunder, Sparks were certainly flying on this team. Shockingly, there's a little lightning joke for you. Like Robin and Jubilee, this was a short-lived relationship. But though it was brief, it was passionate and meaningful to both. After the Avengers came together to defeat the alien called Warbringer, their second mission was to stop a supervillain who was causing a deadly hurricane in Atlantic City. Emerging from the fight victorious, Thor was in a celebratory mood. When some bystanders complained that they were rescued by replacement Avengers, Sam was frustrated and wondered if Thor got tired of hearing cracks like that. Instead of responding, Jane just told Captain America he worried too much and pulled him into a passionate kiss. In addition to giving the characters something to bond over, this commentary about replacement Avengers reflected a lot of the hate some fans had towards these legacy characters. By bringing the two close together on the Avengers, it helped show how each character dealt with that burden and made a statement to fans that these two new takes offered a different perspective on their namesakes. After the kiss, Jane explained that life was too brief not to embrace the moment and he should worry less about what other people think and rely more on his impulses before it all passed him by. Captain America and the rest of the Avengers looked on in shock as the new Thor flew away. Thor's energy and lust for life proved to be irresistible and inspiring to Sam who felt burdened by his new superhero identity. But he did not know her true identity which also explained the reason behind her magnetic seize the moment personality. In her mortal form, Jane Foster was dying of cancer and her body was getting weaker. So every time she transformed into Thor, Jane made sure to live life to the fullest in every possible way, including stealing a kiss from Captain America. While fighting an enemy named Equinox, Captain America and Thor were knocked into a portal and separated from the rest of the team, as well as Thor's hammer. Without Mjolnir's magic, Thor reverted to Jane Foster where Sam became one of the few people to discover her true identity. Jane was mortified to reveal the truth not because she was ashamed of her illness, but because she had come to view the mighty Thor as her true, uninhibited self. Sam helped keep Jane safe long enough to recover Mjolnir and rejoin the fight. After the battle, Sam visited Jane during one of her chemotherapy treatments and assured her he was going to keep her secret, but asked that Jane explain her story to him. Though the relationship had started with an impulsive, adrenaline-fueled kiss, the two had forged an authentic connection based on their status as legacy heroes and bonded over keeping Thor's secret. But Sam was not willing to sit back and watch Jane push herself closer to death. He knew that every transformation to Thor undid any benefits of the chemotherapy and worried that Thor was a way for Jane to give herself a noble death. Sam cared about Jane and wanted to make sure she knew that there were people there for her. As her mortal body became sicker, Jane made less and less time for anything that was not super heroics, and that included Sam. He tried to keep in touch with Jane and remind her that there was more to life than just being Thor and that she was not helping the people who loved her by sacrificing herself so recklessly. As her health deteriorated, Jane could not keep up her transformation into Thor. In her final days, she passed out after transforming and ended up in the hospital. Sam joined the select few who knew Jane's secret at her bedside in the hospital. As people who cared for her, they refused to let her pick up the hammer again, as it was becoming clear the next time she transformed might be the last thing she would ever do. After Jane lost her powers as Thor and was no longer an Avenger, the relationship between these two fizzled out. Jane was committed to recovering from her cancer and figuring out who she was without Thor and that meant saying goodbye to potential romance. But in their short time as teammates, their chemistry was so electric that their teenage teammate Miss Marvel couldn't help but write her own fanfiction shipping the two. While the characters behind the masks are completely different from their original versions, you have to admit it is weird to see Thor and Captain America as a couple. And with Sam Wilson taking up the shield in the MCU and Jane Foster revealed as the new Thor, perhaps this is one strange romance that we could see on the screen and revived in the pages of the comics. It's certainly more likely than this horse professing its love for one of the heroes still to come. Next at number 6 is Magneto and Rogue. One of the most iconic villains in X-Men history and among Marvel Universe's most complex characters, Magneto, the master of magnetism, has never really been classified as good or evil. 
Despite his villainy, he has proven to be quite a charismatic guy, inspiring follows and acolytes to do his bidding and romancing many women in his lifetime. One of his strangest, though brief love interests was the power-stealing mutant Rogue. In the Savage Land, a tropical oasis hidden within the Antarctic where dinosaurs still roam, these two mutants found themselves falling for one another despite a massive age gap. In the 1990s, Magneto had already been alive for well over 60 years, having been a survivor of World War II, whereas Rogue was still a young Southern Belle. This kind of age gap is not usually a recipe for success, and unsurprisingly, this is one romance that also didn't last. The love story began when a powerless rogue ended up stranded alone in the Savage Land after an adventure with the X-Men. She was rescued by Magneto and joined up with him to help liberate the Savage Land from a villain who sought to destroy it and use its resources to conquer the world. Though their goals were both to aid those who couldn't defend themselves, Magneto's methods were far more ruthless than rogues, and she acted as his conscious, tempering his rage and violent impulses. She tried to convince Magneto that they were the good guys and that they had to be a above the violent force of their enemies. This optimistic view of the world touched Magneto and was part of what made him fond of her. As they fought for the savage land, the two pushed and pulled at each other back and forth between their extremes. At the time, Magneto had been on a long journey where he was seeking to redeem himself from his more evil past and Rogue was helping him on that journey. While that was sweet, he was old enough to be her grandfather and that made it a bit gross. Things ended tragically for these two when Magneto, against Rogue's protest, murdered an enemy in cold blood right before her eyes. That's when Rogue came to her senses and realized she would not be able to change him. But perhaps even this pairing is not as strange as it first appeared. After all, Rogue was also introduced as a villain herself. In Magneto, she may have seen an attempt to help bring someone else on the journey of redemption with her, where Magneto saw in her a glimmer of hope for the good person he might have the chance to be. While this is a chapter between the two characters not mentioned much since it closed, a few years later, Rogue would fall for another cloned version of Magneto who was a little more heroic who went by the impressive name, Joseph. So there seems to be more leftover feelings there to work through. As we'll see, Magneto's not the only supervillain to end up involved with one of our beloved superheroes. While Lex Luthor's Strange's hookup had a whole bunch of red flags, at least Dr. Octopus went for someone more age-appropriate. Moving on to number 5, Lex Luthor and Supergirl. Talk about forbidden love, Superman's arch enemy and Supergirl. How could it be? Shortly before the classic story, The Death of Superman, the villainous Lex Luthor had died leaving his company LexCorp in complete disarray. Months later, an unknown heir was discovered in Australia. This Alexander Luther Jr. had a head flowing of red hair and seemed to want to use his father's fortune for social good. I think you can guess what eventually happened here. It was revealed sometime later that this supposed heir was the original Lex in a new, younger body. Still the same old evil, power-hungry villain as always. As part of his plans to control Metropolis, he had convinced the current Supergirl that Alexander Luther was a good man who wanted to help others and slowly earned her trust until their partnership became a genuine romance. Weird enough so far, right? But just wait, this Supergirl wasn't the more familiar version of Superman's Kryptonian cousin that we all know and love. This version was created in a pocket dimension by an alternate version of Luthor and was a sentient protoplasm that could shapeshift and imitate many of Superman's abilities. This being called the Matrix was eventually stranded in Superman's reality where Superman helped her build a new life for herself. After the younger Luthor returned to Metropolis, he gradually manipulated Supergirl's heroic and naive desire to do good, convincing her that his goals and intelligence would guide her to do the right thing. She became his bodyguard, and when Luthor made Supergirl girl's association with LexCorp public, it led to a clash between her and Superman who was unable to trust anyone named Lex Luthor no matter how much he claimed he was not like his father. Supergirl was eventually able to convince Superman she was free to make her own choices. After Superman's death in a battle against the villain Doomsday, Supergirl became the head of LexCorp's private police force and was a temporary replacement for Superman fighting crime and keeping order in Metropolis. This was a particularly upsetting relationship because of the way Lex treated the naive Supergirl, who was so desperate to please Lex that she was easily manipulated to use her powers for his petty vendettas. And as you already could have guessed, this relationship ended on bad terms. Supergirl eventually discovered that Lex was creating thousands of clones of her. You know, that old cliche. When she discovered the cloning chamber, Supergirl fought through an army of mindless duplicates of herself and ended up killing all of the clones in her fury at being betrayed. 
but Lex was also sick and was using the clone research to create a new body for himself. When Supergirl attacked him in rage, she nearly killed him before relenting. She did manage to prevent him from creating his new body and Lex fell into a coma and lost all of the new hair he had created for himself in the younger body. And yet, this is not even the strangest Supergirl romance in comics. Moving on to number four, Elektra and the Punisher. Now, these are two characters not known for being what one would consider emotionally stable. Brutal and merciless killers Elektra and Punisher have plenty in common, but that is also what makes it so strange for them to let any romance into their lives. Still, these two managed to hit it off. Of course, both insisted their hookup was just for fun, but when your therapy involves murder, it's probably safe to assume your emotions might be a little confused. Perhaps because of that, this was not a fling that lasted very long. Maybe it's a good thing for the criminal underworld. Romance blossomed between these two murderous mercenaries when they were on the Thunderbolts, a team made up of anti-heroes and former villains. This version of the team was led by General Thunderbolt Ross, aka the Red Hulk, and also included the likes of Venom and Deadpool. When Deadpool hit on Elektra, she blew him off by revealing that she and Punisher were already sleeping together. Deadpool was a bit bummed out by this as he actually had quite a genuine crush on her. He probably admired her similar fashion sense. These two could actually have been an interesting pair if the writers had spent more time focusing on them instead of revealing their romance in a flashback late in the Thunderbolt series. As a pair of ruthless killers, it might have been fun to see the way they bonded over their gruesome battles. The hints we do get about how they fell for each other are darkly funny. While this relationship started off purely physical and emotionless, the two eventually bonded and forged a genuine romance. In a flashback during one of the last issues of the Thunderbolt series, it was revealed that their attraction began when the two brought down a criminal named Vic Strega. Elektra handed Punisher Strega's heart, and after that, he was never able to get the woman off his mind. He was infatuated with the way she moved and the way she fought, calling her killings an elegant dance. Yeah, just a totally normal relationship. I mean, who hasn't found their true love after witnessing them murder a couple of criminals? When the Punisher eventually turned on the Thunderbolts for refusing to kill those he believed deserved it, he eventually clashed with Elektra. During their fight, the two recalled their slowly budding romance. Early during their time together, Punisher had offered a truly twisted romantic gesture by presenting her with a bronzed heart of their first kill, Vic Strega. As they battled in the present, Punisher revealed that he had stolen the heart back and that whatever they had was now over. He was done with the Thunderbolts and that included Elektra. He dropped the heart to the ground and let it split in two. With the two now separated, all that was left of their time together was a literal broken heart. Still not strange enough? Wait until you find out who fell in love with death. Coming in at number three is Dr. Octopus and Aunt May. Ah, sweet old Aunt May. So naive and trusting. When a down and out Otto Octavius came to rent a spare room at the Parker residence after Peter moved out for college, May was convinced he was just a fine, upstanding gentleman. Peter tried to convince his aunt that Otto was a criminal and not to be trusted, but was unable to do so without revealing his secret identity to her. Sometime later, while pursuing Ox, Spidey confronted him in his mansion headquarters and saw that Aunt May was with him. Believing she had been kidnapped, Spidey attacked Dr. Octopus and unleashed his anger by brutally beating the villain until his Aunt May begged him to stop, or she would have had no choice but to shoot him. Elderly Aunt May pointed a gun at Spider-Man begging him not to hurt Dr. Octopus certainly has to be one of the strangest moments in Spider-Man history. Unbeknownst to Peter, May had been staying with Octavius, whom she did not know was actually a violent criminal. Spider-Man managed to stop Octavius and hand him over to the cops. In the meantime, May agreed to stay at his mansion and watch over the house. She actually cared about him and believed Dr. Octopus cared about her. In truth, it was all part of Doc Ock's plan. While he was imprisoned, he had discovered that May Parker was the heiress of massive wealth in the form of a Canadian island that just so happened to be the home of a nuclear reactor. To get his greedy hands on the land, Ock had been slowly building May's trust until he was able to convince her to marry him. Things got so far along that Ock had started the wedding service and was about to marry May when Octavius's criminal rival Hammerhead attacked. Octavius and May escaped to the island with Spidey and Hammerhead in pursuit. Hammerhead's attack resulted in the nuclear reacting exploding, but not before Spidey had escaped with May. 
It was later revealed that Octavia somehow survived, though he was now haunted by the irradiated ghost of Hammerhead and found his way once again to Aunt May who took him in. When Peter went to visit his aunt, he was shocked to see one of his arch rivals. Over a bucket of fried chicken, Octavius explained his plot to Peter and how he survived the blast. He turned to Aunt May because he believed she would be the only person who might help him in his recovery, and it even seemed like he actually cared about her. When the ghost of Hammerhead appeared in the Parker's living room, Ock grabbed Aunt May and fled, leaving Spider-Man having to follow. Spider-Man eventually apprehended Dr. Octopus, but it left Aunt May hating Spider-Man even more. After all, to her, Doc Ock was a kindly man and Spider-Man was a publicly known menace. Ock would prove that his affection for May Parker was genuine years later when he reformed Dr. Octopus and a cloned body of Peter Parker, now going by the name the Superior Octopus, risked his life to save Aunt May, declaring that this woman would forever be under his care. Now that Octavius has spent some time as a hero and Aunt May has become a more rounded character instead of just a frail old lady, it might actually be interesting to see how this relationship could be revisited or updated for modern readers in a way that makes the original story a bit less goofy. If the Doc Ock Aunt May love connection is still not bizarre enough for you, then strap in for Deadpool's greatest and weirdest romance. Slicing in at number 2 is Death and Deadpool. In the Marvel Universe, death isn't just a concept. It has a living, physical embodiment. It also has found itself the object of affection from multiple characters in the Marvel Universe, most notably Thanos the Mad Titan. In the comics, Thanos killed half the population of the universe in order to show his love for death and to get her to notice him. She was mostly unimpressed. So imagine how jealous he must have been to see her fall in love with none other than Wade Wilson, the merc with a mouth, the wise-cracking assassin known as Deadpool. In the 1998 one-shot issue Deadpool and Death Annual, readers discovered that while he was captured and experimented on by the Weapon X organization that gave him his healing powers, he encountered death from his strong desire to die. Death became infatuated with Wade Wilson, telling him that he could be with her if he had just let go of his life. After that initial meeting, Wade tried time and again to die during the various tortures inflicted upon him, hoping to see Death again. Eventually, his desire for vengeance overcame him and took him away from Death so that he could kill the head of Weapon X. Years later, after he was killed in a fight, he encountered Death again. She presented him with the souls of those who were counting on him to continue living. The two were separated again. Finding out his beloved Death preferred Deadpool to himself, Thanos later cursed Deadpool with eternal life. This way, Thanos had kept his greatest rival for his love's affection away from her permanently. Not knowing of Thanos' curse, Deadpool spent years desperately seeking to die so he could once again meet his beloved, but his incredible healing factor kept him alive no matter what injuries befell him. While fighting an evil duplicate of himself that was able to be killed, Deadpool went seeking a way to be reunited with Death once and for all. As he went looking for the serum that had negated his evil clone's healing factor, he spoke with Death and promised he would soon join her. She begged him not to give her any false hope, but Deadpool had a plan that was big and tough and would be hard to pull off. Proving that these two were a perfect match, Death departed with a, that's what she said. Thanks to Thanos' curse, Deadpool's ongoing journey to be reunited with Death permanently failed, but he relished every near-death experience for letting him briefly be near his love. In those moments, he would be sure to set the mood with the appropriate romantic outfit and ambiance. Romantic for Deadpool, anyway. It was one of those brief reunions that Deadpool learned that Death was in danger. All of the creatures in the universe had suddenly become immortal. Deadpool suspected Thanos was responsible and stole a spaceship to track him down. The two romantic rivals met face to face for the first time and proceeded to fight. Thanos was so angry with Deadpool and his annoying behavior that he removed the curse he had laid on the mercenary, which meant Deadpool was the only mortal left in the universe. Blinded by his rage, Thanos announced that he would take back the gift of mortality he had inflicted upon Deadpool and finally let him die. After beating Deadpool so badly he was literally flattened into a puddle, Thanos was horrified to realize that this now meant Deadpool was the only person who could be with death. Panicked by the thought, Thanos brought Deadpool back to life. But in his brief time in the afterlife, Deadpool met with Death and learned that she had been trapped in a dark space and needed to be rescued. She told Deadpool that she believed he was her true champion and that he would find her and put things right because no matter how dark things got, he could find the light. Together, Death's greatest loves learned that the cosmic being known as Eternity, the physical embodiment of reality, had taken Lady Death and they teamed up to save her. 
They entered its cosmic realm to rescue her, which resulted in Thanos destroying Eternity for his beloved. It turned out that this was all part of Death's plan to have Eternity killed and cause the death of reality itself. To stop this, Deadpool briefly obtained the Uni Power, an all-powerful sentient cosmic energy that grants its wielder cosmic awareness and incredible strength in energy manipulation. This granted him the temporary title of Captain Universe and the strength to defeat Thanos. During the fight, Wade managed to convince Death of the validity of life and to abandon her murderous plans. Though the two are still separate Separated, and Deadpool longs to see her again, his heroic proclivities, violent though they may be, mean he is no longer quite as eager to join her permanently. Who knows, maybe one day this anti-hero will help Death in her responsibilities of choosing who lives and dies. That would definitely end well for everyone. Lastly, number one, Supergirl and Comet the Super Horse. Somehow a mercenary ninja and the physical manifestation of the concept of death is not the strangest romance in superhero comics. No, that title belongs to the relationship between Supergirl and Comet the Super Horse. This is not a case where a weird idea actually turned out kind of sweet, this one is just plain weird. Comet the Super Horse was a classic superpowered animal companion in the Silver Age. In those days, there was a whole zoo of super critters including Streaky the Super Cat and most famous Crypto the Super Dog. Comet was a bit different in that he was not originally horse, but a centaur who had been cursed by the Greek goddess Circe and turned into a full horse. She had actually attempted to do the opposite and turn him into a human that could be with her, but the spell was sabotaged. To make up for her mistake, she gave him a potion that granted him superpowers and immortality. The same sorcerer who initially messed up Cersei's transformation spell later sent Comet into space out of jealousy, where he was trapped for centuries. Supergirl first met Comet in Action Comics 292, where during a fight with alien invaders, he rescued her in midair. Because of the shooting star mark on his back, she named him Comet. When she awoke the next day, she believed the whole thing had been a dream. Comet later revealed that he had used his psychic abilities to draw her to him by implanting the dream in her mind. Comet's affection for Supergirl began when the rocket that carried her from Krypton to Earth somehow managed to free Comet from his space prison. He vowed to eventually join her and help her any way he could. Over time, Comet's thought bubbles would reveal that his feelings for Supergirl were a little more than gratitude. On a mission to the alien planet Xenox, Comet was magically granted the ability to change into a man, but only temporarily and only when a comet flew overhead. Supergirl first caught a glimpse of the human comet shortly before passing out and was immediately infatuated by the handsome man. Back on Earth during one of his transformations, Supergirl encountered him disguised as a rodeo performer. She helped save his life from an out-of-control bull, and in gratitude he stole a kiss from her, all the while chuckling to himself about the secret of his true identity. Later on Valentine's Day, the two would actually go on a date where Supergirl showed her affection by carving their names into a tree with her heat vision. If you're having trouble keeping up here, don't worry, none of it makes any sense. The most important thing is that Supergirl kissed a man who was secretly a horse. While Supergirl's affection was fleeting during Comet's human transformations, Comet felt quite strongly about their romance and harbored a long-lasting affection for Supergirl, lamenting multiple times that if only he was truly human, he could be with her. You might be able to guess this is a story that comics have not touched in decades, and understandably so. So, as you can see, superhero comics have a long history of truly bizarre relationships. For more strange stories from comics past, like and subscribe to Plot Armor Comics. Well, I've been Morse Code and you've been awesome. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.